What up, what up, what up? What up, everybody? It's your girl, Marquita, but they like to call me Who Miss Hollywood, and you're tuned into another episode of So Hollywood, the podcast. Is it me or was it hiding here? Is it me or was it hiding here? Hey, hey, hey. What up, everybody? It's your girl, Marquita. But they like to call me who? Miss Hollywood. And you're tuned into yet another episode of So Hollywood, the podcast. (laughs) So Hollywood, the podcast is a platform where everyone is treated equally. And I bring them together with this thing called entertainment. Catch the latest episode of So Hollywood, the podcast on your favorite podcast streaming platform, as well as Instagram and YouTube Want to be a guest on So Hollywood the Podcast? Go to www. No, I'm just <laughs> Go to So Hollywood the Podcast Instagram page. Artist, if you're looking to perform, I do have a segment called Welcome to the Limelight. The link is in the bio. And um, I'm also located in the Virginia area. And we're going to bring my special guest up here shortly. Um, she is a comedian and on air. I'm not a comedian. She is an on air talent, uh, a model, a world traveler, a candle nista, a podcaster. She has a podcast by the name of Whiskey Soured, and she is located in the Los Angeles area. We're going to bring her up here. She's going to get up here shortly. But like I said, if you want to perform on Welcome to the Limelight, holla at your girl. Me, M I S S Hollywood 313. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We're going to bring her up here shortly. But like I said, So Hollywood the Podcast is a platform where everyone is treated equally, and I bring them together with this thing called entertainment. Um, originally bridging the gap for the generation to come and the generation that is before us. So give me just a second. There we go. We're going to cut uh, some of this out. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yes, go to www.youtube.com slash So Hollywood, the podcast. I just dropped an episode. Um, who was it? August three times. Yeah. August three times. We have her in the building. Her name is Dominique Loving. Bring her up. Hi, how are you? Hello, how are you? I am good. Give me just a second. Let me make sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So we are in the process of recording. So welcome to So Hollywood, the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. That's good to hear. Um, I actually found out about you through, um, I think it was zooming with the homies and I had got, uh, some of your, some of your, um, comedic, comedic friends up here earlier. And I was like, she seems very interesting and I would love for her to come (laughs) and be a part of So Hollywood, the podcast, because you're definitely taking off. Um, and I've seen you do modeling, you have a podcast, you have a candle line. So we're going to get into that here shortly. So, um, her name is Dominique Lovins, AKA St. Angeles or Angeles or St. Angeles. How do you say it correctly? St. Angeles. Okay. St. Angeles. We're going to get into the name as well, because I know, uh, it's kind of bridging the gap from, you know, where you came from into where you are now, but, um, But let's get into this interview. Uh, How did this thing called entertainment enter your life? You know, honestly, I think growing up, I always had a a knack for it. You know, like Mm -hmm. growing up, I was always performing, whether it had been in in a puppet ministry. I had a puppet ministry. There was a puppet ministry at my church that I was a part of. So explain to us what a puppet ministry is, because I don't think I've ever heard of it put in that form. So please explain. The difference between a show and the ministry, um, we were really big. Our director, Linda Adams, is really big and specific on it being called a ministry because though we were entertaining, it was not for your entertainment. We were spreading the word of God through puppetry. 
Okay. And so we traveled across the country with this troop, you know, uh, some of my closest like friends, my sister, all of us were in this ministry together and we would travel like to different states uh, and perform. So, uh, churches would invite us uh, to perform and it would be free of charge too. We would just, you know, ask that you would give us a love offering. Um, but yeah, so that's what we would do. So I was like performing then and then even in elementary school, I was always, you know, anytime we had some sort of assembly, for the most part, I was always the uh, the MC, so the mistress of ceremony. Um, so I was always be, you know, really comfortable and confident speaking in front of crowds, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, public speaking is always like the, the biggest fear that people have. Uh, it's mm -hmm. higher on the list than death. Yeah. People don't like speaking publicly. And it's something that I you know, took very seriously. Um, and I knew I wanted to move to LA to get into, you know, entertainment journalism. I had take, taken acting classes, choir, all of that stuff, speech and debate when I was in college, public speaking, uh, again, in, po um, in college, dancing, all of that. So I had a, a special place in my heart for it. And I moved here right after um, graduation. So here we are. Originally, you're originally from St. Louis, correct? Yes, I'm originally from St. Louis. Um, went to school in St. Louis, um, a liberal arts college uh, called Webster. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a really great conservatory program. Uh, Jake from State Farm was in that program. Okay. <laughs> the black Jake, I have to specify, because there used to be, there was a white Jake. The black Jake from State Farm. <laughs> right, I knew who you were talking about. I knew exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to our school as well. He's a Gorlock. But yeah, so that was, that was pretty much it. Like we, you know, and I moved here and now I'm, you know, getting the footing and it's mm -hmm. been an interesting, fun journey. Thank oh God for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I might have said that last time I'm like that and I have to. Zooming with the homies might not have happened. Yep. Yep. Your podcast, your candling, everything um, would have probably not have happened. But like you said, uh, thank goodness for COVID. But at the same time, it's like, ugh, it's a double-edged sword. So. <laughs> it's, I, shit, I could go back on lockdown. The traffic, the peace of mind that you have, the interaction. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, I'm Absolutely. like, give me, listen, six feet still for me. I still wear my mask. So hello. And people look at you like, uh, that's over. COVID is, COVID is not over. I very well want to be safe and I need for you to be safe as well. I still send my son to school with a mask and like it, you, you just never know at this point. Cause they're coming up with combination of uh, COVID with Corona. What was it? What was it? It was something that came together, and you had like the flu and then the the COVID at the same time, and it was just like don't nah, want it. I'm, don't, <laughs> I don't want, want it. it at all. Don't want it. <laughs> so you said you went to college. Um, let's back up a little bit. So a little bit of background, like um, including you said your puppetry in ministry. And did you did you know like one hundred percent that this is what you wanted to be growing up throughout that time outside of you know doing what you said you did as as far as like the puppetry of the, the you know what I said yeah puppet <laughs> ministry so yeah no I always knew that I wanted to be in entertainment um, some sort of way um, you know I didn't know necessarily what that looked like. Mm. But I knew that's what I wanted to do. And it really kind of started. Um, I really wanted to be like a supermodel. And oh, um, and mom, my mom. So I'm from St. Louis. People from the Midwest mm -hmm. um, have a very Midwestern way of thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm from Detroit, by the way. <laughs> You like, you know, like you like Northwest, North Midwest. So you get it. So it's like. Yeah. The, the ideas of success, it can only come from education. Mm. And, you know, that time, that generation, they never, they really, really emphasize college, you know, extended um, educational experiences. And I'm not that type of person. That's never been my personality. It's not that I wasn't smart or good in school because I was really good in school, but I was just very, very social. 
Right. And but I knew I remember like eighth grade, I really I was so skinny, I was so lanky and tall, and I heard an ad for um, Model Search America on the radio. And so I told my dad, I told my dad, I said, Dad, can we please go? I really feel like I have what it takes to be, a, you know, like a model. And I go, we walk, it's like my sister and I, because she's also like tall and, and lanky at the time too. And they pick us. But the the model that was there that had gotten discovered, that had gotten representation, she felt really, really connected to me, my look, everything. And was like, hey, she has to go. She has to go. She talked to like one of the producers. They talked it out. They said, we want her to go so bad. We're going to discount what this, this, you know, because they would meet in like, they would go to like different cities and then you would meet like all in one place. Like, so it was Kansas City. Right. They're like, okay, we, we have to, we know like they they might fight for representation for her because right. we know she's going to get signed. Right. So my dad whipped out his checkbook and was ready to, he's like, let me talk to their mom. And I was like, oh my God, why would you do that? Just pay it. Just let's, let's go. Let's go. I'm going to make, like, I will be able to have y'all retire. I'm going to take care of y'all. Yeah. Man, my mom was like, no. She was like, well, Carla said, who's my godma? I was like, if they want her to come, like they have to like cover it all. Like it's a scam and blah, 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 blah. I was like, they, we pretty much are paying for the hotel. Right. So my sister got picked too, but she didn't get a discount. And so I, ever since then, you know, people say you can't resent your parents, but I was <laughs> like, you a fucking dream. So can I curse? I'm sorry. Of You're course. A, yes. Yes. Dream crusher, mom. You're a dream crusher. And here I am, full circle. It was one day, like a few years ago, my mom was like, yeah, I was watching the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Yeah, you should have been on that wrong way. And I was like, ooh, it just took you back. That triggered you right there. <laughs> trigger so you know now I'm like older more mature and so I am now I'm trying to do it all and mm. I'm confident that I can do it all so now I like reach out to my network I'm like okay what agency you know are you signed with do you like it what are the pros and cons of this place mm. blah, blah 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 so I was like okay if I could lose about I need to lose 10 pounds in the next couple weeks as I ordered raisin canes today <laughs> When I went to go get my candle wax, but that's it. Everything else is just all going in the trash. It got to be finished today. If it ain't finished today, it's going it's in the right. trash. It's going in the trash. <laughs> it's do or die. Yeah. It's do or die. It's- it is. It is absolutely because at this point, it shows that you you know you're progressing into something so amazing. You know how a butterfly. Um, breaks out of its cocoon I think you're at that at that point in your life to where you're spreading your wings and you're spread and you know what you want and it's right in front of you and you're going to get it and shout out to you for all of the endeavors that you you have completed and you will complete in the near future so um let, <laughs> that's really really dope though that's, that means a lot that means a lot uh no problem Ty, Ty Davis says it best uh one of my favorite uh comedians and she was like I'm a butterfly, bitch. I can no longer do caterpillar things. <laughs> and that's just the... Spe- and I tell people the, the most beautiful way to describe this transition that, we, that I'm in, it's like I'm on the verge of a breakdown and a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, it's like, it's like beautiful chaos. Yes. And you know that this is just a moment in time. And being able to push through the fear... And to still press go because you know what's on the other side is so much greater than where you are now. And so that's the conversation that I consistently have with myself. And a mantra that I picked up from uh, Exo Nicole is show me how good it can get. And yeah. that's where I am. I'm like, show me how good it can get through the depression, through the anxiety, through all of that. Like, just show me how good it can get. And that's where I'm at in life. Mm. And so when you took that leap of faith, how old were you and what kind of 
Like, where were you in life when you took that transition to move to Los Angeles and just to say, I'm stepping out on faith and I'm going to do something? Because you're like I said, you're originally from St. Louis. So at that time, did you know anybody or like how did you how was your whole setup for that move? And what were you feeling emotionally when you got to Los Angeles? I had never lived on my own. Mm -hmm. So even throughout college, I commuted to campus and in the matter, like I wanted to move out, but, and I was actually looking at places to move with my girlfriends. We were looking at three bedrooms and, you know, I was just like having multiple jobs, like, because I really wanted to move out, but I knew, like I said, that's eighth grade, like that experience with Model Search America, let me realize like, like my potential, but also I came to LA for a graduation, um, like right after, as I was going into uh, like the summer of my freshman year. Okay. And so I went there and I went to New York uh, that same summer. And I was like, yeah, LA is something different about the air. LA is the vibe. Like that's where I'm moving when I, I wouldn't have gone to college to be quite honest. I was ready after high school to really push through. And, right. but again, um, was forced into going to college um, and I, so I moved right after graduation. So a few months after graduation, I transferred, I had a job when I moved to, I worked for Nordstrom mm -hmm. and I uh, transferred to one of the busiest Nordstroms uh, in LA at the Grove. Okay. And so it was like almost kind of predestined because I had a job. I was living uh, with a former family member in um, Beverly Hills. And I was, mm -hmm. I didn't have my car, but I, would, I was close enough to my job where I could walk. Mm. And so I would walk to, to Nordstrom um, and made friends like right away. And we created this family. And then I would like move on my own and get my own apartment. And, you know, like it, it was just, I, I tell people, I'm like, I knew that that, this is where I was supposed to be. But I also knew how hard it could be to, you know, like get a job out here. And so I was like, I got to start thinking about other stuff. And so where can I go? And I just stayed with my job. I told them that I had gotten into grad school, but I didn't. And they didn't ask for proof. So it was cool. So it was, it, it's just, I've been here 12 years. <laughs> So I'll be 12 years. Actually, it's 12 years in a couple of days. I will be t in LA. Yeah. Wow. How ironic this happens this way. <laughs> yeah. Literally moved to LA a couple, you know, t 12 years, of, a few days from now. Um, and literally, I just packed up my suitcases. They told me my transfer went through and I was out. They, my boss at the time, um, Eric Walking Stick, was like, can you, I need you here by such and such day. We're about to have a sale. So I want you to get a feel for like the department and meet everybody. And yeah, so. So they already knew you were coming in from another state. Yeah, they, they already knew. A, okay. okay. Yeah, they already knew it was an uh, opening and I got the opening and it was great. Like it just all worked out. I, did, I was thinking like top of the year, you know, I didn't know how long it was going to take, but it was right. go time. And I was like, all right cool and my boyfriend at the time like dropped me off at the airport uh I remember my mom came and got in my bed that morning and she's not like the most um emotional person you know mm -hmm. black mamas <laughs> and she was just like you know she kind of got like a little emotional about it and I was like okay all right girl Aww. like don't make this difficult you know right. for me because I had never you know, really lived on my own. And I, so now I'm in on the opposite side of the country, you know, and not even opposite. Cause it's not like I'm from the East coast, but you know, right. Midwest, I'm so many miles away. Right. And, um, it's just, it, I'm just excited. I was excited to be here and has it been easy? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. But it's all been worth it. It's mm. all been worth it. I bet. Now, how has it been like a culture shock in in between that, or um, were you kind of like used to 
stuff in that in that nature as far as like the Los Angeles area in the St. Louis. It, wh- okay, so first of all, what is the what are the similarities and the differences between where you came from to where you are now? Honestly, there no, there's nothing mm. that is parallel or similar. Um and 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 I'm not saying that just you know, I'm and, and, but that's my experience. Yeah, absolutely. But I think also there's a reason why somehow people that are from similar places, like we find each other, you know, and it just so happens to happen, like you know, to hear. Um, my sister has known to hear since middle school. Mm-hmm. We met. She really introduced us. You know, maybe a couple years prior to COVID, but I would only see to hear when my sister would come in town. We didn't become like super close, and you would think that we were had known each other our entire lives. How we go back and forth, but uh, we didn't really get close. I think people's dynamics and relationships changed a lot during COVID, Mm -hmm. and so we were in constant contact with each other. Um, You know that, and, and developing new friendships on top of that through to here, it really just shifted everything. But we have so many people out here. Like I have friends from college. We all, we don't live too far from each other, but it's, it's the sense of normalcy in reality because Hollywood is definitely an experience. And if you're not grounded, this town will eat you up alive. And when you're from somewhere where we where we're from, where we sharp tongue, you got to be quick on your feet, you know, hustling it out, uh, being able to pivot really fast. This city will get the best of you. It really will get the best of you. And I tell people that all the time. I have so many people uh, that I know that have left. And it's only a few of us that are still here that are remaining. And we all, you know, like we love it for different, for different reasons, you know, like, People think, you know, like it's an old people can experience overnight successes. But no, you see a lot of people that don't lay the that that are laying the groundwork and you don't get to see it. Mm-hmm. You know, Lizzo, Lizzo is a, a perfect example for that. You know, Lizzo had been, you know, having a deal, making videos, doing all that stuff for a long time. And she had that moment where it just took off. So it's about, you know. Slow and steady really does win the race because if you if it does happen to you overnight and you're not prepared for it, you know, Murphy Lee talked about that, you know, mm. being able like not being so young and not mm. prepared and it's slipping through your fingers and, and fingers and you trying to like figure out what's happening in the midst of all this chaos. Yeah, it, it will get you. It will get it you. Will. So, you know, it's all about timing. We don't understand that, but it's really about timing and being the best version of yourself and, you know, curating dope, authentic vibes, <laughs> you yeah. know, for yourself yeah. and for the people around you. So, yes, yeah, dope. So, mm. so did you get into, um, are, are you a comedian or would you consider yourself in a comedic um, aspect of your life or... Are what what would you say you are in your life right now? Because I know you are in the the comedy family, but you know I don't know if you you've expanded that portion of your life yet. So how does the the comedy or the co- comedic standpoint play in your life or fit in your life? I wouldn't say that I was a comedian. I would mm-hmm. say that I am more of a storyteller. I haven't been on the the comedy stage telling jokes. It's something that, you know, some of my friends have encouraged me to do. And, Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a fear. It's just like, okay, you know, life gives us twists and turns, but I like to, I really do like to tell stories. I really do. And, And it's something that, um, I pride myself in and I was just telling the girls the other day, you know, I wanted to add a layer to my um, podcast, um, which is more storytelling, but in the form of like uh, maybe a reel or, you know, a short, you know, YouTube, a YouTube short or just post in general, 
Mm -hmm. um, build an engagement because it's so many things that happen uh, to me, like on a consistent basis, you know, it's, 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 it's too, it's too great not to tell, Mm -hmm. you know, like one of them is this shroom trip. I didn't go on this shroom trip, (laughs) but I experienced it, you know, vicariously because, you know, shrooms Mm -hmm. heightens your emotions. And if you're Mm -hmm. feeling down shrooms, I feel like shrooms or we should not be your go-to, but people do stuff. People do stuff. And my homeboy, you know, we hear about those posts, all those, you know, like audio clips of people calling 911 because McDonald's didn't give them all the yeah. chicken nuggets or something. <laughs> my home, yo, and I'm witnessing it in real time and I'm sober. And I and I, I will say I was borderline tipsy, but I was like, hold on, reality is setting in real quick and it's killing a vibe. And my homeboy calls 911 because his food truck gave him undercooked chicken. So I was like, ooh, how can I turn this into a story? But it's like me incorporating an aspect of um, making a drink or something and right. putting the recipe and but super quick, you know, like telling this story, how can I get this story under a minute or two? Right. But he didn't call once, he called twice. Girl. So I thought and I really so I and I really thought that he was playing. And then once I saw that he really was calling 911 and he was like, Oh, they hung up on me and was mad. I said, okay. I don't have the emotional space to unpack this. I'm going to get our other friend. And then I, my friend goes over there. You know, it's so crazy because my friend goes and I record the video from afar and I'm seeing this interaction and he's really upset. And I was like, why y'all let him take shrooms? Why y'all? Why y'all? Not, why we? You said why you yeah. No, no, I wasn't a part of it. I was not in the room. Okay, you were okay, know. okay. I, I, I was oblivious. <laughs> I was oblivious. <laughs> I was oblivious. And then when they told I said, why y'all let them do that? Oh my, I would have loved to have been on fly on the wall for that. <laughs> it was really bad. It was really bad. It was really bad. <laughs> Now, are you are you presented with a lot of those things throughout your life as far as like different comedic stories that you could tell and turn into uh, a story like you say? Yeah, like it's so funny. I was telling. I was telling. Another comic, a story about a situation that I experienced. Um. Uh, during COVID and he was really like he's like let me mentor like you have it like let me mentor you let me guide you and I'm like if it's going to require me to take a 70 foot ladder and take the sign (laughs) the letters off of the marquee like you did sir I'm not interested I'm not interested (laughs) <laughs> so it, it's just really it's just really funny like you know I remember you know like there's so many experiences and and jokes that happen and and and, 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 and really and even in the midst of the chaos mm-hmm. and, or, or crazy tumultuous things happening to you there's always a silver lining. There's always, always a joke there. It's always, but it's about how you deliver it. But like mm-hmm. I said, I don't, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know. I don't know. But I just want to be able to give people great vibes and a good time. <laughs> and you are. And by, and by, <laughs> like, that's right. Hello. <laughs> Get a vibe, a whole vibe. Get a whole vibe set up. I know that's right. <laughs> So, okay. <laughs> so once you, once you kind of like found, um, I, I saw on YouTube where it says Los Angeles became your soul, um, as a state, 
as you stated on YouTube. So what was that statement geared towards and how can you display that through through what you're doing now? Um, so the concept is, it's like, you know, we all have that foundation. Um, Mm -hmm. and so St. Louis is like my cornerstone. If we think about it as church, right? Mm -hmm. Every church has a cornerstone, which is like the foundation, the, that really sets, sets the tone for everything kind of. And so I think of it from that aspect and I really feel like you go somewhere. I don't know if you've ever been somewhere. Maybe that's not really familiar to you. Like you've mm-hmm. never been there before, but then you go for the first time and you're like, I, I feel like I'm at home. Mm. That's how I feel Yeah. when I, you know, touch back down to LA. And the only other place that kind of feels like that for me is Paris. Mm. But, um, yeah, like St. Louis is not that it's foreign to me anymore. It will always be home, but I also know I can't stay too, too long because it gets very chaotic at times. And you yeah. kind of have to, you know, to hear understands that kind of like, you know, you got to go and be under the radar sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just something about LA, like waking up and it's sunny, you know, all the time. Though I do miss the rainstorms, I'm not going to lie. And it mm-hmm. seems like every time it rains, I have to drive into work. And I'm like, y'all can't drive in the rain. But um, it's just, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to ex- explain it. But it's just like, I feel like heaven here. If mm-hmm. I'm off, off-centered or anything, I'm a person that... Um, you know, I'm a, an Aquarius. And so like we're water bearers. And mm-hmm. so though we're air sign, we represent water, you know, whenever you see it. And so I just go to the beach. I have yeah. to, you know, reset that type of way. So it's like being able to even have access to that, regardless of what the temperature is like. I feel safe there. I feel rejuvenated. I feel replenished there. Um, and it's just, it's just really dope. And Having my friends that have become family um, make it a million and one times better, you mm-hmm. know. So it's just vibes, man. It's vibes. <laughs> it's <my> <laughs> <laughs> Been out there a few times. My brother actually stays in San Bernardino. So shout out to my brother. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> so let's get into. Um, your creations because you created a podcast and then you also created your candle line. So throughout, I'm, I'm assuming COVID or did this happen prior to COVID and which one came first? It's always been an, I like, um, something that I wanted to do, mm-hmm. you know, speaking to people, interviewing people, you know, doing red carpets, like here and there, um, has been something that I always wanted to do, but I always knew that I wanted to connect with people and like people that we know, Mm -hmm. you know, on um, a more interpersonal level. Cause we think about, you know, a lot of stuff that people, people have to remember that social media is very curated. Mm -hmm. And so, and what I mean by that is that we don't really get to see the ins and outs, the struggles sometimes, unless you are talking to somebody on a different level um and so the idea of whiskey sour came about just kind of you know having those conversations with people you know like zooming with the homies ct has his stuff and you know being invited to do other stuff but having those conversations that i felt that were you know, kind of important. Some of them are funny. Some of them are serious and people are navigating lives like, like life and, and different levels and different, right. you know, so everybody's in a different season. We're all never in the same season. So that's how that came about. I had already had two other podcasts that, um, you know, we pumped the brakes on, which was one with my sister. And then I had one with one of my best friends, which was such a great time. But mm-hmm. also I have to realize that everybody isn't in the space sometimes to be able to show up how they would like to. Right. And so I knew that I wanted to do something else. I was like, but I wanted to not be alone. What was something that I could do 
to really engage with people and, and pick their brain a little bit, talk about their projects, but really kind of allow certain, like it just to flow, not where mm-hmm. it was just so curated and was like, okay. So in, in a lot of times I do have um, a set set of questions, right. but it will kind of, we just kind of allow it to flow. Um, exactly. So that's really the concept behind it. Um, it's real, it's raw and, um, it's here to stay. It's not always easy, mm. uh, but it's a good time. <laughs> it's, it's a good time when we talk. We do, and like I tell people, it's literally more. Uh, they're like, "Oh, what does your show talk about?" I was like, "It's literally what it says. It's conversations." What? Oh, what, but what do you always talk about? I'm like, it's anything. Like right. it depends on that guest that week. You know, are we doing a review of something? Are we really um, breaking down stuff? What? What gravitates? to us and that moment so like we the recent uh, most recent episode that's out is um a review of hunk for jesus so my sister and I, yeah so my sister and i we're going back and forth about what that meant to to us we grew up in a church know what that's right. like the pressure all of these different things and different things we took away from it trying to understand why you know black clergy is so upset about this film Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, so we, we talk about stuff, the ins and outs, you know, sometimes how church can be, you mm-hmm. know, a little corrupt at times. It's mm-hmm. really, mm-hmm. it's, it's really the, com- the reality of it. And, you know, this week we'll be talking about um, the movie Barbarian and my, one of my really good homeboys and I are like picking apart the movie and was just like, this is where she messed up. She supposed to be black. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. And so even from that, like other ideas spin out. So that's how I got that concept. Um, I had had two shows and wanted to really still try, you know, my hands in this realm. And I didn't want to be a person that was doing or saying really things that were trying to be trendy or, you know, like buzz, like just really having raw, honest, real conversations with with my people so it's it's been such a great time um and just really trying to focus i think that season two the season that i'm in is really pouring into it how i should and really like allowing it to like grow because i feel like i haven't given enough to Mm -hmm. my podcast outside of our recording i posted something no like i really want to build that engagement be able to monetize it um, and have a good time too, you know. Like we we want to be able to reap the benefits of the you know our fruits of labor because it's still work. It's a lot of work. So um, yeah, and with the candles, I buy candles all the time. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite brands is uh, Veluspa, and I I wanted to have a, a section of my um, brand being able to have a, you know, an e-com shop. And I was right. like, what's well, something that everybody likes? And I know how to sell, you know, work coming from a retail background. I knew I knew how to sell. I knew luxury and I created this luxury line and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and also that's what I was doing today. I was, you know, re-upping on materials early this morning, taking a drive out to pick that stuff up. And, you know, that's, really where my focus is is building that out as well because it's you know honestly a lot of stuff I tell people I was like I need my passion projects to really pay me an entity where I can walk away from my job because that and, and I and it's the reason that the stuff that keeps you there for real like my job is really you know really flexible but I deal with a lot of stuff and I feel like I should be paid more for the BS that I deal mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. but I was like, y'all really keeping me here because of these benefits and they ain't that great either. <laughs> but I'm going to stick around for a little while. But I'm going to stick to the bottom. <laughs> I'm going to stick just, just for a little while longer. So, we, you know, we're going we gonna to figure it out. It's all going to come, you know, when it's supposed to because like I said, you know, show me how good it can get. And right. yeah. So, yeah. So here we are. Here we are. <laughs> So how did the name come about for your podcast and your um your candle fragrance? 
Okay, Saint, so St. Angeles um, is my, is my, uh, one of my monikers. And it is a fusion of St. Louis. So I take the Saint and then Angeles is the Los Angeles aspect mm-hmm. of it. And mm-hmm. it's just vibey. It sounds very um, wealthy, luxurious. Yes. It, <clears throat> it, it, and so regardless of what that name is on, it could be unisex. Like it could mm-hmm. be anything. And so that's where I got that from. Because at first, my even my my whole thing was like Pretty Sididi. So I initially had a blog back in the day. It was like the tea with Pretty Sididi. And I had started like a, a small like gossip blog. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want to just talk about, you know, stuff like that or whatever. I really, really did it. So I was like, okay, I already had picked up, like, you know, already had St. Angeles in my profile. So when people would ask, I said, oh, St. Louis and, uh, you know, Los Angeles or whatever. So I was like, mm, I'm just going to turn that into my brand. And that's mm-hmm. what I did. So. Mm-hmm. Um, it was that simple for me, but whiskey soured. Um, is that your favorite drink? It's one of them. Girl, I have a <laughs> lot of whiskey based <laughs> drinks, but whiskey soured is like, you know, mm, that can mean anything. Like you can kind of, it, it's like unisex enough because men drink it, women drink it. And I want it men to also feel like that they, they could engage with mm. what I was talking about. Funny mm-hmm. enough, on St. Angeles, though, I would like it to be, you know, like more unisex. My main consumer of my page is men. So, <laughs> so, which is, so you have to, t- you have to think about that when you look at analytics, analytics, Absolutely. a lot of that stuff comes into play. So Absolutely. I'm like, okay, well, maybe like I, I have a, a brand partnership with a jewelry line. Um, and I think that I have my, I've been trying to think about, okay, how can I curate that to get men to engage? Like, you know, I know a lot Mm -hmm. of men have girlfriends uh, or wives that follow me um, and some of them don't, but it's like, how can I turn them into, you know, real consumers? Right. And then even when it comes to my candle line, I, I have pretty much everything is unisex. There's nothing about it that says, Oh, it's girly because the wax is white, the jars are clear, the the packaging is black and white. It's very simple, very luxe, right? Absolutely. So, you know, talking to, you know, male friends about it, it's like, you know, maybe pick up a, a few more masculine, incorporate a few more masculine since I said, that's not a problem for me, you know. Um, so, you know, thinking about stuff like that. So that's where I got that that idea from. But whiskey sour was just, it's always trying to fuse bridge the group. We all want to just bridge the gap. Big facts. Big facts. Like, how can we all hear each other? How can we all communicate? I'm all about community. Um, you know, it's certain stuff. I feel like I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not engaged in white Twitter enough and not that white Twitter is right because I'm <laughs> far from that. But I'm like, it's certain topics. I'm like, it's certain words I have to mute. It's certain statements I have to mute. I'm like, because there's no way that this comes up this many times a day and I was like or or it's getting retweeted and so I even had to take a step back and be like okay I might have to start unfollowing people how can I curate this and do (laughs) and do but it's it's like it makes no sense some of the stuff that we consistently find ourselves engaged with you know on you know certain aspects and certain levels of social media and it's Mm -hmm. some stuff that does make you sit back and go hmm Mm -hmm. Mhm. Mhm. So it's like okay, so how can I have that conversation but make it to where if it's my audience where we're mm-hmm. not being combative and going back and forth but where we're really taking a moment to listen and to mm-hmm. understand each other. Mm-hmm. Because it it becomes it, it's a it's a process. It's a, <laughs> it's a it's a really big process. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> So that's, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much you know the cons the idea like I don't like I said I don't want to make people feel like they're being attacked it's always a safe space of we course. might not always see eye to eye um, mm-hmm. you know but 
being able to really understand people and listen and being able to respond with understanding is a, is a huge portion of that. Mm. So it, and even it's, it's certain things that I will steer clear of because I know that people get, you know, when it comes to certain things, people get really emotional about, and I'm like, ah, no. So that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Whiskey Soured. Make sure you guys tune in to her podcast. And also get the candles. You can find that on the link in the bio, correct? Yes. Saint, okay. uh, Saint, S-A-I-N-T dash Angelus dot com slash candles. Okay. So, so um, we, we have one final question um, for our interview. And then we're going to push forward to uh, top five, which is five questions catered to you, my guest. So, um if you could choose one of the many things that you love to do, what would you choose and why would you choose that? The many things that I love to do. Mm-hmm. The the main thing that I think I would really, that's, that's really tough, but I mm-hmm. would probably say just the, the, the modeling aspect of it, the photo mm-hmm. aspect, being able to, you know, have that generate a level of like revenue and all that stuff. Cause that's something that I've always been pretty, pretty good at. Like I, I feel like I'm really good at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's nothing like I, I did, um, Dion hit me up to do some uh, headshots. And so I was like, okay, cool. And I came in and, we got him off really quick, like within like 15 minutes. He was like, Oh shoot. I was like, Oh, I don't take long. Like, I was like, you got stuff to do. We, you, you got other clients coming in. You do, you know, you're, um, so I'm not trying to take up too much of your time. So, um, yeah, like it, it happens like so quickly. I, I think I'm pretty good at it. Like, so yeah, that's something that I definitely want to still, even in my big age, explore and I would mm. love to walk a runway again like mm. I would love to walk you know even and I would say more so I know we focus on like the big brands a lot but I would love to walk in a show for like Fee Noel or Hanifa they're black owned uh women uh mm-hmm. clothing uh labels or whatever mm-hmm. so designers so yeah, like I would love to do that and be featured. And I still listen, I don't know how I'm gonna get there, but I'm gonna get there. And yeah, Vogue is cute and all, but we're gonna be on Essence too. You know, that's the method. So just giving, giving, you know, being just very black, being very proud in the spaces that I'm in. Mm-hmm. And beautiful. Thank you. No problem. Cause your pictures, I was like, where is she going? And what what in okay, okay, I see it. <laughs> Just to hang out in the living room, you know, sometimes. <laughs> you're so comfortable in front of the camera and it's just it shows so keep it up and i definitely see you walking the wrong way because i i want to um piggyback off of that because i used to model as well and i used to walk the runway and the runway is it's nothing like walking a runway because you can't see anything but light and sometimes when that light not doesn't shine so bright, then you can see the people and then you're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And so the whole aspect from getting ready to getting your makeup done to walking through the steps, like the whole process of it is just amazing. And and kudos to you to continuing to want to do that because not a lot of people can still are still able to do that. <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You should put on your own own fashion show for your um podcast. Uh, you know, that would be that will fall under the umbrella of the St. Angeles because okay. I mean, okay. it would be because that's more lifestyle, you know, gotcha. curating, you know, certain spaces. So, it's it's definitely something to think about. Um mm-hmm. but you know, we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. In 2023, we shall see. Ooh, bars. <laughs> That's going to be a t-shirt. <laughs> we shall see. 
<laughs> no, that's right. So let's push forward to the top five. I only have four questions for you today. And then we're going to push on to um, wind down, which is our shout outs, last words. And then we're going to wrap up for this interview. So let's get to it. Top five locations you've traveled, because I know you're a traveler and you like to travel all across the world. So top five locations that you've traveled. Um, Paris is number one. Mm-hmm. D, I really enjoy DR, Dominican Republic. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, that's so hard. Okay. I went to Morita, Mexico. So it's like in the Yucatan. Mm-hmm. It's really pretty. Um, Vienna. Got one and, more. And, you know, it, I'm trying to think. Low key, Phoenix is the vibes. Just a little bit. Not in the summertime because it's too hot. <laughs> but Phoenix, Phoenix, definitely. And I know that that list is all over the place, but definitely, uh, yeah. Phoenix is the vibes because they have really great food. They have really great food. I like to eat. So mm-hmm. I'm always, you know, I'm very full when I leave Phoenix because I'm going to eat good. And, but again, not in the summertime. <laughs> I see you do a lot of Hello Fresh too. You do you do a lot of Hello Fresh. Uh, I have Hello Fresh. That's mainly because I was becoming too wasteful, and I hate the concept of grocery shopping because we know how grocery shopping goes. You have to hit mm-hmm. so many stores, mm-hmm. and I um I don't no. And so it gives you everything that you need in the packages. So mm-hmm. it's easier to and you try so many different recipes too. Um. I got to pick my um, list tonight, but it's just, it's just easier. It's just so much easier. And I'm more frugal, uh, well, frugal with my money when it comes to grocery shopping and I'm not uh, wasteful. So yeah, that was, that was two of the biggest things for me to be frugal when it came to grocery shopping and not to be wasteful. And I got it down. Mm. All right. Top five candle choices. What are your top five choices? <clears throat> um, my top five candle choices are gonna be uh all for my brand. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna mm-hmm. be uh the, the first one is La Petition, which is partition in French. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna do Saint Germain, which is amazing. Oh, it smells so good. That's kind of like a semi-masculine scent. We got Republique, which is another one. We got Saint Tropez. Mm -hmm. um, And we have Le Jardin. And then um, Honorable Mention, which is not my brand, is Veluspa. They have Mm -hmm. Macassar, Ebony Peach. All right. Yeah. (laughs) I'll be nice. I'll be nice. I'll be nice. Okay. Top five things that you would like to kick off your bucket list. Uh vacation in San Tropez that was supposed mm-hmm. to happen before COVID happened, but San Tropez, Maldives. Uh, I would love to go to Fiji. Mm-hmm. Um I I I'm telling you, I re- I'm really a beachy girl. Like I love the water, I love the ocean. I would love to go to um I w- I still want to go to Egypt and okay. uh, let's stay in Africa, Tanzania. All right. Final one is top five moments in your career. Ooh, top five moments in my career. Um. I interviewed on the red carpet Mm -hmm. uh, June Ambrose. Uh, It was also, I'm trying to also think. So I had a quick, quick run in with um, Sterling Brown. 
uh, at that same uh, award show. Also, you know, getting that sound bite from Loretta Devine. Mm. Also top tier, because, you know, she is like everybody's mom. Mm -hmm. Um, Other other moment. um, I would even say a highlight is uh, when Tahir came on and everything just got off the rails and we were just (laughs) drunk, having a good time. And um, another <laughs> anything with him is gonna be shenanigans. Um, and another another top moment, I would say top career moment um, was with BT uh, putting me on "Give Me Five. Mm. Shout out to BT. <laughs> shout out to all the comedians, and um, shout out to those that um, have have. Uh, has been it, this community has been through a lot of things within the last couple of months. So um, For I want to say of years, years. <laughs> yeah, a couple of years, and I just want to say to that um, rest in peace to a lot of the fallen comedians that had recently um, lost their lives as well as um, previously. So shout out to them and their family. <clears throat> So let me, yeah, I had to do that before we got up off of here. Cause I'm, I love, um, the comedy family that you guys have created and I watch you guys, like I said, like on YouTube, on Instagram, like I'm, I'm like so in depth with all of you all. And I really appreciate you, uh, for continuing to make people laugh and feel comfortable with themselves throughout this whole pandemic, throughout the whole process. So um, once again, shout out to you guys. And speaking of shout outs, uh, go ahead and do your shout outs, your social media and any last words. And then I have one final, final question that I ask my guests at the end of the show. Okay. Um, you know, you can follow me on um, Instagram, St. Angeles dot com oh, well that's instagram so it's no dot com uh <laughs> so just say angeles also have a link tree um that can take you to other places um like my candles um oh, i have yeah. a third yes uh whiskey soured wherever you podcast you can also find it on youtube how you can search it is either through my name or i always post it as whiskey soured and whatever the name of that episode will be. So you can search mm-hmm. it that way, but it's sour word E D because we drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, and also I have a 30% off code, uh, St. Angeles, uh, which is S A I N T A N G L E S S Y jewels.com. So get 30% off your first purchase. All right. Final one is what bothers you about the industry? And what will be your solution to help fixing it? I think what really grinds my gears is in some areas, and I don't experience it often, but it's only when it comes to mainstream media, is the lack of um, creativity when it uh, mm-hmm. sometimes. So it's amazing to be in the space, uh, the spaces of you know, people that are creating a space for them and the people that consume their, you know, content um, because we know how people can gatekeep, people don't allow certain people to be in. And we now live in this era where people can be like, okay, you're not messing with me. I've auditioned, I've done this so many times and you're still telling me no and I've given you this, kind, like it's, it, so I'm going to do it myself. I think that's the most frustrating thing that we see happen. And, you know, because we know so many talented and creative people, you know, um, I have a friend that, um, and it takes time too, you know, and I think that's also like, oh, I know it takes time, but it's like, when is it? So it's just like being able to rest and just like, I know it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But, you know, like a lot of my friends, like we, write, produce, do all these different things. And they're now in the space of, hey, I can do a GoFundMe. I can use my network to get this off the ground, this idea that I have. Mm. So I think that's the solution to it all is a lot of people, especially people that look like us, going to avenues like YouTube, um, 
you know, Kev created an app because he was so tired and frustrated at people telling him no. But which one thing that you always see with them, that whole family, is that they look out for each other. Uh-huh. So, so being able to use, you know, use your network like that. You know, we always think about how things will look like, oh, if I get this deal with Paramount or or Sony, whatever. It's like, what would that look like? And it's like, uh, is it really that great? Because now, like, do you still have that same creative control? So I really mm. think it's dope that a lot of people are, you know, like I have the equity, you know, or somewhat of the equity and I'm going to find this, you know, the finance in these different, different, you know, different types of ways mm-hmm. and putting it together themselves. Right. Right. They're not afraid to take chances and, you know, they're not afraid to get knocked down and, and get right back up because nine times out of 10, it's going to be about 10 or 12 more people behind that person that was like, OK, well, this person didn't work out. Let's see what this next person could do or this. You know, it's a it's a trickle effect that that will eventually if once that once that one person get on, everybody's like, OK, all oh, y'all good. Let's let's go. I'm going to come back and get everybody. So that's that's what I see. And that's what I like. And that's what I, I also live by is to to help one another whenever you see somebody down or whenever you see them trying and they're missing something don't be like oh well you missing something and not tell me what i'm missing or you know what i mean don't don't be that person i absolutely i wholeheartedly like agree with you like i should be able to ask you know certain questions without you know like you don't have to give me all the juice but kind of like steer me in the right path or you know and and that's the relationship that i have with you know, a lot of my, my peers and, you know, Mm -hmm. like I said, for me, it's more so these are the goals that I have. These are the things that I know I can do and how can I also contribute, you know, to things that other people are doing to it. And it's, Mm -hmm. and, and, and and allow people grace, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't think we do that enough to each other. I think the weirdest thing about social media, and it's always been weird to me is people that, sit behind their phones and keyboards and and say weird mean things to people it's like why are you following that don't you don't have to consume what they're putting out this is for people i know my audience and i'm trying to engage with them and you know another big thing too is we always talk about if you be able to like subscribe and share that's free Mm -hmm. you know that that's a lot for creators like we we need that engagement um, and if you could buy a shirt, you could buy a candle or whatever, like, please, you know, mm-hmm. we have like Patreons and stuff like, and you really like the content and you want more that we're not putting out, like subscribe to the Patreon too, you know, uh, but just really, you know, really that's, that's, we give you guys all that content. It's like, please, please just like it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> please like that's it. it. Please <laughs> like it. Please watch it. <laughs> Cause I get it. Like everybody is, there's a lot of people that want to be able to subscribe to everything and buy everything mm-hmm. that everybody puts out, but they can't, I wanted to listen, Beyonce don't know me though. I've met her twice, <laughs> but I wanted to buy every item, every box ever mm-hmm. that I, mm-hmm. I know realistically and pocket wise, I can't. So I'm mm-hmm. going to support you the best way that I can. Like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. though I did mm-hmm. buy a box that never showed up and y'all know how hell that has been. Never got Uh-oh. my box, so it's cool. Uh-oh. Like I tried, <laughs> but you know, every time if I'm liking somebody, is watching somebody stuff, I be sure to like it. I try to mm-hmm. leave a comment, you know, whatever the case may be. And you know, it's so weird that people and 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 I and I guess it's it's it goes back to the timing thing. Like, but one of the weird things, the weird tweets that I've been seeing is that there needs to be an adult spelling bee. And then I'm like, so me, what do I do? There is one. It's called spelling is hard. There's wording is hard. Like tweet the link out. That's what I'm like, y'all missing it. Like, because these are great episodes, you know, but that's the type of friend that I am. I'm going to support my friends no matter what. And and it's it's been happening every so many days. And I'm just like, this is really weird. (laughs) So you know it's 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 a process and in due time and yeah. because when and, and that's how i i tell t i t- i'm like when i blow i was like when you when you gonna blow yeah. 
And mm. and and I have to remember that. It's like when I'm a I, because that's just really if I don't believe in me, who gonna believe in me? You know, it's really that simple. And so I think being able to figure out different ways where I can be of entertainment to you guys uh, while being cute, getting a good shot off, lighting the candle, whatever the case may be. I take pride in that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, it's, it's baby steps. It's patience is realigning yourself, getting yourself ready. So you don't have to get ready when that opportunity presents itself. So hello, you heard it. (laughs) Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. (laughs) Well, Dominique, I do appreciate you for blessing So Holly with the podcast with an interview here on So Holly with the podcast. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe to this video. Follow me, your host, MISS Hollywood 313, and the podcast, So Holly with the podcast. And if you have anything else left to say, um, you can say it now. If not, Um, We're going to end this episode. And like I said, I appreciate you for doing and continuing to be who you are. And like I said, we, we, we didn't even meet like at all. We only met via social media. And through that, you have been a, a, a great um, participant and you just held it down throughout the many changes that we had to make <laughs> through this process. I thought it was going to be a live. And so I was like, girl, I don't have access to go live. I was like, I'm in the, I'm in the, in, I'm in the, the Insta jail. I don't know how long I'm going to be in here. And you're like, we can do it. I said, no, that page on in jail too. So, <laughs> so I was confused today. I was like, oh, are we going live? And you send me this link. I was like, oh, okay, then great. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I used to go live and then it just, it wasn't working out for me. So I had to make changes as I went. And so, um, when I do pre-recorded ones, it seems to come out a little bit better because I can, you know, have advertisement and whatever else I need on the screen. So um, it's all good. And we got through it. And like I said before, I do appreciate you for sliding through. Uh, But until next time, uh, shout out to everybody that follows me. And if you don't follow me, just hit that follow button. Duh. But um, we're going to get up out of here. And if, like I said, if you have anything else, we're going to get up out of here. If not, we're going to get up out of here. Like she said, hit the like, subscribe, and share button. Leave a comment. That's it. All right. Peace up, A-Town Down. Is it me or was it hot in here? Yeah. Is it me or was it hot in here? To be a guest on So Hollywood the Podcast, just email So Hollywood the Podcast at gmail.com or follow me on Instagram, So Hollywood the Podcast. And M I S S Hollywood 313. Wee! Oh, 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 oh,